What's going on guys, Vince Centenary here, and today we are covering the evolution of the four generations of Ford Mustang GT Coyote motors. Now before we get into it, just wanna let you guys know that we will be covering the F-150 motors. Again, there's more generations of F-150 Coyote motors and there are some differences than the regular GT. But today we're just gonna cover the Mustang GTs and also a couple of the special variants like the Boss 302, the GT350 and the GT500 and kind of talk about the general evolution of the Coyote motor. Now gentlemen and lady, just understand, I'm not an engine builder. This is a very general, basic video, meant for entertainment purposes. I'm just a guy on the internet having a good time, relaxing in his video game media room, just making some videos on a random camera. So just keep that in mind and take everything I say with a pinch of salt. Now, let me paint you a picture here, okay? It's the year 2010, and you got your Mustang GT with your 4.6 liter three valve, making 315 horsepower, which was okay back in 2005 when it came out and it had 300 horsepower, but times have changed. It's 2010, the Camaro's back. The LS3 is in the Camaro. It makes 426 horsepower. The Dodge Challenger is out. The SRT model has a 6.1 liter Hemi, and that makes over 400 horsepower. Ford, while having the lightest vehicle, still needed to do something, and do something they did. And what they did is they came out with the Coyote. At 5.0 liters, the first generation Coyote came out in 2011 with 412 horsepower. And throughout the first generation of Coyote, which occurred from 2011 to 2014, the Coyote went up to 420 horsepower. You had four cams. You had a higher red line than before. You had a modern engine. The Coyote was made for success. It took the market by storm. People were making a ton of power. Additionally, one special model came out. It was called the Boss 302. So you had the regular Mustang GT with the Generation 1 Coyote, and then you had the Boss 302. The Boss 302 made 444 horsepower with a Roadrunner engine, which was very similar to a Coyote, but had stronger rods, a different intake manifold, and a few other minor internal differences. Remember the Roadrunner, because this, this becomes very important when we get to Generation 2. But sticking with Generation 1, it was a port injection modern V8, and cars were moving. It did have one weakness though, and the weakness was is that it did have rods that weren't the strongest. So you could take it up to around 700 horsepower for most guys, and maybe if you're a really good tuner, maybe push it a little bit beyond, but for the most part, you were kind of limited by your rods. This is where Generation 2 came in. So again, Generation 1, 2011, 2014, right? Coyote, and you have the Roadrunner with the stronger rods. Then comes 2015, and you get the Generation 2 Coyote. You get a couple things with that, right? First thing is, horsepower goes up to 435 horsepower, torque goes up to 400 flat. Bigger camshafts. Next thing it had, stronger rods taken from the Roadrunner and put into the Gen 2 Coyote. It did have a couple other minor internal differences, but the main point was now the Coyote could take a lot of power. If you combine that with the 6R80 transmission, it was a very, very good platform to make power on. Not that the Gen 1 was bad, because the Gen 1 paved the way. It gained 100 horsepower over the three valve 4.6 liter from 05 to 2010. But now the Gen 2 really showed the capabilities of the Coyote motor because you could boost these things 700, 750, even 800 horsepower right out of the gate. Maybe do some oil pump gears, very limited supporting mods. And while yes, some of the parts are more expensive to replace like the giant heads on a Coyote, or if you have head related problems compared to let's say an LS engine, it may be more expensive. But overall with mainly factory parts, you could make a ton of power and the Gen 2 showcase showcase wow woo not that i can talk today but the gen 2 really showcased this and took this to the next level now most of you guys who can count know that after 2 
comes number three. And for the third generation Coyote, there was definitely some big changes. One of the most important changes was the compression ratio. Now the Coyote at this point had been running an 11 to one compression ratio, which is fairly high for a stock car. But the Gen 3 took it up to a 12 to one compression ratio. It also had two fuel pumps, it had port and direct injection, and allowed for E85 essentially right out of the factory, as long as you had a tune on the car. for the Gen 3 Coyote. Yes, Anna Banana's car. Yes, the elusive Anna Banana. By the way, stay tuned. We're getting some new wheels on this. They're actually, they actually came in, so I'll be posting some pictures very, very soon. But Gen 3 Coyote, right? 12 to one compression, 10 speed, 10 R80, right? Which, while a bit quirky, admittedly, when it works, is very, very quick to shift. Combine that with the, again, the up in compression ratio, 460 horsepower. I mean, even stock, this bad boy, she does boogie. I mean. Woo! I mean, even stock, even stock, she boogies. Ford gave you a really, really good platform from the factory. Little to do things. Headers, intake, E85, you're making 500 horsepower to the wheels. You wanna do a VMP Odin supercharger and you wanna do, again, uh, oil pump gears, just a very little basic supporting mod, you're making 700 to 800 wheel horsepower. You wanna throw in a turbo kit, people are making eight to 900 horsepower. These cars just love and love and love to make power. And I don't know why I'm shouting, but I just love this car. And it's not even mine, it's the bananas. Woo! Now, I will say, for the first year of the 2018 Mustangs, there was some people saying, hey, Gen 2s are a little bit better for boost. And there are some people that say that today. And the reason is because of that compression ratio. You know, people are saying, hey, you know what? The fuel system and the 10R80 are very cool for, you know, the Gen 3 Coyote as kind of your supporting transmission and, you know, overall as a platform. But a lot of people say Gen 2 makes a little bit more sense if you're gonna go high horsepower with boost, which I can see. The 6R80, while not quite as quick and doesn't have as many bells and whistles as the 10R80, is very reliable and a little bit less quirky. Plus, once you do get above the 750 to 800 horsepower mark, the 6R80 is a little bit more reliable according to a lot of different people that I've seen with that transmission versus the 10 speed and some of the transmission shops. Um, a lot of people say that the clutches are the wearing factor on the 10R80 with your Gen 3 Coyote pairing of your, again, 18 through 23 Mustang GT, which is what is essentially the 10R80 comes with, you know, in which your Gen 3 uh, Coyote motor comes with. We'll say, you know, if you do want to make boost on a 2018 through 2023 Mustang GT, um, a lot of people have done it and a lot of people are currently doing it and they're doing it very successfully. So I wouldn't necessarily be afraid, but I will say a lot of transmission shops and a lot of YouTubers that actually, you know, work on these kind of cars or build these kind of cars um, or even shops that I've watched through different interviews, podcasts, and just watching YouTube automotive, you know, enthusiasts in general, generally say that the 6R80 and the Gen 2 are the absolute best for higher boost out of the gate. But the Gen 3 comes with a ton of features and I love our Gen 3 and Anna Banana does too. I'll tell you what, she gets on it. She's driving it to work all the time. This is her daily driver, California special premium car. She digs it. And we haven't thankfully had any problems. So that is the Gen 3. Now the Gen 3 did also offer something else very, very impressive. And that was the 5.2 liter Predator engine. Now to back up a little bit, we had the 5.2 liter Voodoo engine, which again, flat plane crank, generation two Shelby GT350 engine, right? With the Tremec six-speed manual. Really, really nice. Good power, revs to over 8,200 RPM, 
just an absolute driver's dream. But they took it a step further with the GT500. While you may not have the crazy sounds of the flat plane crank, because they did put a cross plane crank, just to make it a little bit more boost friendly, right? You do get 760 horsepower, different valve springs, different internal changes within the head, but 5.2 liter Predator Gen 3 engine makes a ton of power with very basic modifications. People are making 900 to the wheels with more modifications. People are making 1,000 to the wheels. And with that dual clutch, the transmission and the, the engine, they are holding at those power levels for quite a long time. And that's the thing, it is extremely impressive. You know, I may love my LS3 car, I love the LS7s, LSAs, and LT4s, I love my GM stuff, I love my Hellcats, you know, with the 6.2 liter supercharged motor, but the GT500s, no doubt, are extremely impressive, and that is, in turn, due to the 5.2 liter Predator engine that really holds that boost and just makes a ton of horsepower. Now that we've covered Gen 3 pretty well, at least I think so, let's go back to the house and let's cover the new 2024 Mustang GT and the Dark Horse with the Gen 4 Coyote. Back to the house. Okay, we're back in the house. We survived the drive. Let's talk about the last generation of Coyote in the Mustang, and that's going to be the Gen 4 Coyote. Now, for the GT, you get 480 horsepower. Not bad. You get the active exhaust, you get 46. The Gen 4 Coyote is pretty similar to the Gen 3, except you have that cool twin intake system. So you got two throttle bodies, you got two intakes, and it lets a little bit more air, lets the engine breathe, breathe a little bit better. Um, and that was the main thing for the GT. Compression ratio is the same, and for the most part, the car is mostly the same to my knowledge. But the Dark Horse is where things get interesting. Now the Dark Horse makes 500 horsepower, that's right, as they said, is you know, when they unveiled it, 500 horsepower, you know, yeah, it makes 500 horsepower, which is cool from the factory. Um, you also get the Tremec transmission, which is pretty cool. Um, the thing is, with the Dark Horse, you get a couple other goodies. You get a new crankshaft that is stronger, and you also get the rods from the GT500. So the generation four cars can't be tuned at this time, but when tuning becomes available, the Dark Horse for boost is probably going to have some really, really awesome power numbers when you boost it. Um, and they're gonna, those motors are probably going to be able to handle a lot of power. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, us talking about all the generations of Coyote Mustang engines, generation one through four. Again, as an overview, I just want to let you guys know, you get that Gen 1, that was 2011 to 14, Gen 2, 15 to 17, Gen 3, 18 to 23, and then we got the 2024 Mustang coming in at the generation four cars. Now, I, like I said, full disclosure, I am just some guy making videos who likes cars and you know, is chilling in his video game slash media room. But if you want to check the actual specs of particularly the Gen 1 through Gen 3 Mustang, I will leave you a link in the description. It is the same link that VMP used in their Coyote overview video, where it basically gives you the specs of the Generation 1, 2, and 3 Coyote motors. And then I will leave you a link to an article of from Road and Track, where they talked about the new crankshaft and new rods from the GT500 in the Dark Horse. So guys, don't forget, leave a like and a comment if you like the video. If not, that's fine too, no problem. Who knows if I'm even real again, I'm just a dude in the internet having a good time talking about Mustangs. And I will hopefully see you guys in the next one. Take care.